Good afternoon fellow teachers and this is Rotten Monteroyo and today I will be discussing with you the principles of script writing and of course that includes radio based instruction or RBI script writing and editing but beforehand I would like to acknowledge the source of this slide presentations Mr. Uh, Dennis B. Body from Division of Antiki, one of the resource speakers during the regional orientation of radio based instruction episodes. Now, mga ka RBI, teacher frontliners, before we take flight with our session, I want you to remember these three words entertain, inform, and educate. Why? Because as RBI frontliners, we will have these three roles that is to entertain inform and educate our listeners which is our learners okay now what are these uh, principles of radio script writing and basic radio script format okay if you are writing or conceptualizing a certain script for your uh, RBI lesson we have to remember the following okay now uh, first we uh, need guides on how to put flesh into the script so teachers pag sinabi natin put flesh into the script we have to consider kung paano natin bibigyang buhay ang mga tauhan o characters sa ating kwento say for example if drama based ang gagawin mong script so dapat naka outline na siya on how will the story goes who will be the characters of the story? Okay, ano yung pagkasunod-sunod ng mga events sa kwento? Sa so, ganun yun. And then, there should also be a short paragraph to justify or explain the choice of treatment. Okay, so depende pag, ano ka depende yun kung anong grade level yung RBI lesson mo. Okay, but for me, as long as it is aligned and tailored fit to attain the objectives of your lesson or competencies, it is already justifiable itself, right? Okay, then a detailed summary designed to share the writer's or screenwriter's plan for the script with others before an actual script is written. Two heads are better than one, ika nga. So, pag gusto nyo gawing bonggang-bongga talaga yung presentation or hindi naman bonggang-bongga, kumbaga you just wanted to improve it and make it better, mag-brainstorm or ask technical assistance or suggestion from the experts. Okay, so, andyan na. Ready-ready yung mga nagpupugian at nagagandahan nating mga taga CID department who is always... Uh, willing to help okay now we proceed to the kinds of treatment okay so pag sinabi natin kinds of treatment we are referring to the approaches no kung paano natin i-deliver ang ating script okay the first one is the straight narration or teacher approach of which the teacher directly narrates Okay, it includes narration of facts and messages in a straightforward manner, usually written in third person. Examples, sa third person, ano nga? He, she, it, they, di ba? Okay, it's also uh, one of most formal and basic way of presenting the subject matter. Okay, the second one is the dramatic approach. Ito, ito yung ginamit natin uh, during the airing of our first RBI uh, episode last June 15, di ba? May drama siya, may story. Because it is also suggested sa, during the training uh, ng regional orientation for radio-based uh, less instruction. So, it consists of characters de depicting various roles. May mga characters doon sa story. And presentation is a conflict, climax or anti-climax and a resolution. It involves the parts of a, the drama. Okay, then later on, tatalakayin natin kung paano ang kanyang format. Okay, so, uh, that would be uh, an awesome dramatic approach. is suggested siya para sa, especially sa mga... Uh, lower grades or K-3 na curriculum uh, bakit? Kasi uh, it will sustain the interest of your listeners. 
Uh, kasi nga, nandun yung element ng drama. So, makikurious sila or uh, uh, it will sustain their, their interest na makinig pa. Di ba? Kasi, uh, curious sila kung anong mangyayari doon sa susunod na uh, event sa kwento. Okay, the next one is the you approach. This one is used naman, uh, this format is being used naman doon sa national uh, webinar series ng UP Diliman, di ba? Ang sinasabi lang you approach, my format din ito. And it's also suggested, especially sa mga higher grades, kasi yung mga, mga high school or mga na, na, na belong na doon sa uh, senior high, junior high, no, ayaw na nila, kumbaga, ng mga uh, drama. So, nakokornihan na sila. Okay, it's a you approach yung ginagamit wherein audiences are addressed directly by the word you. Implies the second person point of view. So, parang nag-uusap lang talaga sila. It is uh, like a uh, uh, normal classroom setup. A script is written as if the writer is talking directly to the viewers. And this one is much easier to prepare. No? Parang talagang nandun ka lang sa iyong classroom at uh, nakikipag-usap sa iyong mga uh, learners. So, ito yung tinatawag nating new approach. Okay, so later, uh, ipapakita ko rin sa inyo kung ano ang format nitong new approach. Okay, then we have the dialogue approach. It is presented in a form of, of conversation. So, parang may nag-uusap. And while nag-uusap uh, sila, yung dalawang characters, doon mo ipapasok yung mga concept mo about sa lesson. Si, for example, yung maglolo. Okay, may lolo na character and then may apo. Nagtatanong ng apo, uh, yung apo sa kanyang lolo. Okay, yung lolo ay uh, magsasagot uh, or uh, he will answer sa question ng kanyang apo. Yung mga question, doon mo ipapasok yung mga concept mo of the lesson. Okay? So then, let's proceed to the documentary approach. So this uh, is a combination of approaches with the use of voice, clips, sound effects to make the presentation more realistic and credible. Okay, it's a combination. It is like bringing your listeners into a real setting or scenario example approach used in documentaries in Araling Panlipunan. So, for example, may mga sound ng bombs or voices of struggles ng ating mga kapwa Pilipino during the World War II. So, pwede mo siyang gawing realistic talaga by the use of voice clips at mga sound effects. So, parang mararamdaman nila talaga na, ah, ganun pala yun. Mabibingi ka sa mga tunog ng bomba. Okay? So, uh, in that way, ditong documentary approach, so parang realistic talaga yung dating sa mga listeners natin or sa mga learners natin. Next, we have abstract or symbolic approach. This approach is good for arts lesson or mapel lessons and because it triggers the imagination of the listeners that they make their own presentation of the information presented. Okay, it includes sense and abstract visuals and ideas may not be started explicitly and audience makes own interpretation of the information presented. Good for the arts but not for scientific and technical information. Okay, so dito kasi may kalayaan yung listeners na mag-isip or mag-interpret ng mga object or uh, based sa information na uh, binibigay ng teacher. Okay, so dito madidevelop yung kanilang creative thinking. Okay. Next, we will discuss the principles in writing for radio. Paano naman natin uh, isusulat yung ating script kung para sa radio, di ba? Kayo may iba't ibang klase ng uh, pagsusulat ng script. So, uh, tatandaan natin na may mga uh, uh, mga bagay tayo na dapat tandaan if we are writing for a radio script. Okay, the first one, of course, is we have to personalize. Pag sinabi natin personalize, it is knowing your audience, uh, 
Like for example, kung ano yung grade level nila. So if you are making lessons for K to 3, see to it that it is really for K to 3 curriculum. So teachers, let's continue to the principles in writing for radio. So dito na tayo so personalize. Okay, so definitely teachers your script or stories or kind of treatment will depend on what grade level your learners will be. So, pag K to 3, gamitin ang drama approach to sustain their interest. Pag higher grade, or pag higher grade levels, pwede na gamitin yung SOWA, or School on Air approach, or tinatawag natin new approach para sa yung mga listeners. Next, you have to be clear. Choose simple words. Avoid a long word when a short word will do. So, remember that you are writing for a radio script. Kung pwede na lang gawin simple yung words, gawin mo. Kasi, a time really matters. Remember that every second counts if you are writing a radio script. So, going simple instead of long words. Okay, para madaling ma-remember or madaling matandaan ng iyong mga listener ang iyong mga sinasabi. Okay. Next, be precise. Use words carefully to provide specific meanings. Okay, always say what you mean. Avoid beating around the bush. Okay, so directly na lang yung pagkakasabi mo. Make it conversational. Yung parang nakikipag-usap ka, you are saying things, are saying words, uh, precise words. Okay, direct to the point ka na agad. Okay, then you can also use contractions. So make it really appear like informal, yung parang nag-uusap lang. It, it sound more natural and familiar. Okay, so use contractions. Okay, contractions sound more natural and familiar and easier to read aloud. Examples will not to want, do not to don't. Okay. But, there are instances that you need to avoid contractions when you want to emphasize an important a point, especially when you are writing a news. Say for example, the senator does not support the freedom of information bill. Okay, so you, the word does not, you did not contract it. Instead, you really spell it out because it is important. It is an important point that your listener must remember. And then, in principles for writing a radio script, you have to be concise. Okay, every word used must have a purpose for being there. So therefore, wag gamitin ang word pag hindi naman masyado importante. Okay, replace a series of words or phrase with one word that mean the same. Okay, so pag the same lang naman ang ibig nilang sabihin, Okay, and if the, the one that, the, I choose the one that is much simpler. Example, we have once a week to a weekly. So instead na gumamit ka na uh, a statement na uh, pupil should report to, this, uh, to school once a week. So uh, use the word weekly instead of once a week. They need to report uh, in school weekly. Then, giving testimony to testify. So, instead of using giving testimony to a sentence, use the word testify. It is much simpler and much concise to use. Okay. So, makakasave ka ng segundo. Be concrete. Avoid vague and abstract words. Words must elicit tangible images. Example, five-story building, 200-pound woman, but don't use too many adjectives. Okay, so, you avoid mo yung mga words na hindi naman nila kayang uh, i-visualize sa kanilang 
uh, imagination or sa kanilang mind kung pwedeng gawin mong tangible si for example five story building so doon pag sinabi mong five story building yung learners or yung tagapakinig mo ay automatically they can imagine on their minds how tall is that five story building okay you say five kilograms uh, woman so yo yung weight ng babae is 50 kilogram okay kaya medyo magaan kasi eh, that is equivalent to isang sako ng bigas di ba okay pag sinabi mo namang fa 100 kilogram ay hindi ko na kayang buhatin kasi dalawang sako ng bigas na yon o masyado nang um, mabigat si ma'am <laughs> pag sinabi mo 100 kilogram okay Fortunately, hindi pa naman tayo maabot doon. Pero malapit na. And, the, but don't use too many adjectives. Why? Because it will create certain confusion sa yung tagapakinig. Hindi na nila masyadong matanay kasi masyado ka ng maraming sinasabi. Okay. Hindi na nila alam kung anong adjective yung pipiliin nila. Kasi nga marami ka nang na-mention. As, uh, as much as possible, Use tangible images, limit your adjectives to uh, precise language, to the precise and really to the definite na adjective or uh, words na makaka-describe sa iyong gustong iparating sa iyong mga tagapakinig. Then be informal and conversational. Okay, speak to the audience, not read to read them. Okay, so gawin mong parang ah, nakikipag-usap ka lang usual classroom setup and then you are delivering lessons sa yung mga estudyante. Involve the listeners, talk to them in a normal conversation. Write for the ear, not for reading. So kumbaga, uh, shall, I use the, uh, shall I use the uh, term ear-friendly? Kasi it is for <coughs> auditory skills nila yung uh, ginagamit nila. So, you are writing for them to learn, not to impress your listeners, to learn something. Okay? Involve your listeners. Talk to them in a normal conversation. Make them feel na parang nandyan ka lang sa kanilang tabi, <coughs> kanilang harapan na nakikipag-usap. Tulad ng isang normal classroom setup. You will make your um, <coughs> learners feel like Malayo man, malapit din. Parang ganun. Okay, mararamdaman nila na nakikipag-usap ka, na, ka lang sa kanila. Connect to your listeners. Okay, involve them to check them from time to time. Baka natutulog na yan at hindi na nakikinig. No? Natutulog nga doon sa face-to-face uh, -face na setup. Ano pa kaya kung uh, nasa radio? So, going interactive yung script mo, we're in yung mga listeners mo will be really involved you know, will really be excited, make them uh, excited to listen to you okay, ganun, ganun yung gawin mong setup and of course, be readable okay, broadcast copy must be smooth and readable <clears throat> avoid sevalent words, words with letters S and Z and Tang twisters, okay? So, hindi lang pala dapat listener-friendly siya. Dapat gawin mo rin, ano, uh, gawin mo rin siyang voice talent friendly. So, ang voice talent at ang script writer should really best of friends, okay? So, dapat gawin mo siyang readable yung, uh, yung mga script. So, <clears throat> dapat tandem sila Oh, huwag gano'n na pag sinabi mo, ay, ito, masyadong, ano, katikalong, gidnisang, ano ni, as na akong voice talent, bilang taunta, kung kaya, yung gidni, i-deliver ang mga tongue twisters nga budlay, budlay kay, though, filingera or filingero ni siya. So, don't <clears throat> think that way. Okay? Dapat, magiging friendly yung script mo sa iyong uh, taga-deliver. At yung voice talent naman, at least, they could give justice to your work as a script writer. 
But if you are a script writer and at the same time kaya mong mag voice talent, wow, nasa iyo na ang lahat. Okay, kudos to Ma'am Kristen Modelo, Ma'am Dina Tablan, and Ma'am Helen Lee Chavez for being the writers and of course the script writers. Believe na gid kami sa inyo, mga gwapahan kag mga sexy talented. Pamahaw. Okay, so in principles in writing for radio. Can we continue? Be readable. Avoid alliterations. Next. Okay, let's continue to the principles of or in writing for a radio. Dito na tayo sa avoiding homonyms. Okay, so in as much as possible, avoid homonyms to uh, avoid certain confusion sa yung mga taga pakinig. Okay, not unless kung homonyms yung lesson mo about homonyms. Uh, say for example, if you are doing a lesson about certain figurative language, no? Okay, or sound devices rather, uh, like homonyms. So, uh, you have to avoid them. Kasi it will create confusion sa iyong mga listeners or sa iyong mga learners. Pag sinabi mong homonyms, they are each of two or more words having the same spelling or pronunciation but different meanings and origins. So, for example, address or address, no? Uh, kasi, uh, bright, fear, no? I I iba kasi yung dating, no? Doon sa yung mga uh, tagapakinig. And sometimes, pag masyado nang nag nadala yung Uh, yung voice talent mo sa pagbabasa ng script, uh, ma mamimislook niya yung uh, pag, yung stress doon sa word kung saan niya ilalagay. Tulad ng record, record, no? Uh, so, it will create a certain confusion sa mga bata. Okay. So, next. Avoid homonyms then. Observe the one idea, one sentence rule. Avoid overcrowding, especially using those dangling modifier and complex sentences because it will create so many ideas in one sentence. Okay, so it should be yours. You, if you are writing a script, it should be an air friendly. You are writing to make your pupils learn, not to impress them. And the more ideas included in one sentence, the more difficult it is for the audience to understand the information presented. So, pag masyado ka ng maraming sinasabi, masyadong, uh, hindi na nila masyadong nauunawaan pa ganon. Okay? And then, observe uh, the one idea, one sentence rule. Tapos na yan. Then, use the active voice. Kasi, uh, iba yung Uh, dating ng active voice, mas matatandaan nila yung information. Okay. So, hindi siya masyadong awkward gami gamitin kaysa passive voice. Cat and one is representative. Example, cat and one is representative has called for an investigation of the reported leakage of this year's nursing in licensure examination. Okay. So, tandaan yan, mga fellow script writers. Then, prefer the indirect quotation. This helps in creating a smoother, readable story. Say, for example, if you say the, this sentence, although both of them, okay, are correct. So, mas weak siya pag sinabi mong the president said, agriculture needs to be improved throughout the country. But, it would be better if you say the president said that agriculture needs to be improved throughout the country. Why? Kasi doon sa first statement, magpo-pause ka pa. So, may second pa yan, no? Okay. So, hindi siya spontaneous yung delivery mo ng iyong statement. Kasi nga, gumamit ka ng direct quotation. Pag, ma, pero pag indirect quotation yung ginamit mo, like for example, sa, at, sa ating second, second uh, example or second sentence, it would be better. Kaya nga, ah, ang, pag, ang paghambal, isa lang. No? Why na siya poses? Kag, uh, indirect ang pag, although indirect siya ang pag-deliver mo, mas dasig siya ihambal kag mas dali may chindihan. Whereas, you are using the requotation. Okay? Next. Uh, illustrate, explain difficult concepts. So, provide a phonetic spelling for unfamiliar words or jargon. Okay, example, we have ang La Mesa Watershed ay isang reserva. Okay, so, reserva o imbakan 
reserve o imbakan o mapagkukuna ng tubig. Okay, so dapat, no, at least to avoid naman na mapahiya yung voice talent mo. mo. Kasi minsan, manami mispronounce, that's inevitable, especially pag live yung, um, live yung uh, RBI episode. Okay, so, uh, medyo mag-create siya ng confusion doon sa tagapakinig kung ano nga ba talaga ang proper pronunciation ng word. Okay, pag may iba naman doon na naghihintay lang ng iyong mga <laughs> mga maling pronunciation ay talagang mababash ka ng wala sa oras. Makikimcho ka doon. Okay, so dapat uh, binang voice talent or binang script writers ay tulungan natin yung mga voice talent natin na hindi naman sila magkamali sa pronounce okay? So, masyado, kasi, minsan kasi may mga parents na nakikinig, ay ano ba yan? Mali-mali naman yung pag-pronounce niya ng uh, voice talent na yan. Okay, huwag ka nang makinig yan dyan. Mag-YouTube ka na lang at least doon. Okay, so sometimes we have to avoid situations like that. Okay, so therefore we have to provide phonetic spelling for unfamiliar words or jargon pronunciation and interpretation of the difficult words para yung mga nakikinig at least malalaman nila kung ano nga bang meaning ng reserva. Okay, so for, say for example, if you say the word arbitrary, pagbasahin mo pa talagang, pag ina-pronounce mo yung r arbitrary yun. Pa, parts of the magazine example, no? Okay, pag, but the correct pronunciation is really obituary, not arbitrary. O, oh, ba? Okay, so, yun lang, only one word lang, pero pag, uh, we really have to be careful with our pronunciation, no? Kasi naman uh, maraming nakikinig, hindi lang mga bata, kundi yung mga parents mismo ay nakikinig dyan habang nagluluto o pag may nanay na marunong dyan, or yung iba nagmamarunong sabihin nyo, ay, ba't mali-mali naman yan yung pagkabigkas? Okay, so mali-mali yung, uh, ano, dapat um, see to it that uh, every concept, information, or even yung pag-pronunciation, we should be very particular to it. Okay? Fellow script writers and voice talents, andyan pa ba kayo? Okay, and then use transition words. Example, likewise, administrators of the country's nursing school support Santiago School for Investigation. Okay, example of transition words is uh, likewise, however, why? In order to create spontaneity to your statement. Okay, so use transition words. Then, repeat the message if necessary because this will make it more memorable for the audience or it will make them easy to recall for of your uh, statement or important details or information that you are giving to your listeners. Example, we have the number to dial is 536-2433. Again, call us at 536-2433. Okay, so ganun. Kailang na iuulit-ulit mo. The law of repetition. Kasi nga, hindi naman siya print hindi rin naman siya visual therefore kailangan mong maulit-ulit okay kasi may mga instances for example yung bata inutusan ng nanay na kumuha ng plato na sa kanilang kusina or uh, may inutusan na importante pinabili doon sa tindahan so hindi niya narinig yung yung part na lang na 433 yun na lang yung narinig ng iyong ng bata okay so whereas pag inulit mo like 5362433 no ganun ay ulit mo may chance yung bata na marinig yung part na hindi niya narinig okay so kumbaga it will uh, help them easy to remember or kung narinig man nila yung buong detalye or narinig nila yung buong details at this pag na iuulit mo sa kanila Madali, mas madali nilang matandaan yun, okay? The law of repetition really applies to the principles in writing for a radio script, okay? Remember that. Then use abbreviation acronyms sparingly and properly. Example, the DOH budget was cut down to blank. Okay, if you say DOH budget, oh, hindi nila masyadong, although alam naman nila kung ano what uh, DOH stands for. 
nung abbreviation na DOH. May iba uh, yung acronym. So, may iba naman talaga na may masyadong uh, may sak sabihin na natin na ating may sakit sa amnesia. So, hindi lang, ano nga yun? Ano, yun ang meaning ng DOH? Wala na silang time na balikan yun or buklatin or kung ano ang acronym na ano, what this acronym stands for. So, it would be much easier if you say, the Department of Health budget was cut down to blah blah blah. Okay, the Department of Health or DOH budget was cut down to amunan siya. So, same for the example of our second uh, example. We have the International Monetary Fund or IMF has approved. So, nilagay mo yung International Monetary Fund, yung word talaga, then you have your acronym IMF. Okay? Next, handle figures properly or round off figures. Example, almost 100 graduates have also filed a petition. Okay, why? Because you will... Okay, for principles, uh, still in principles in writing for a radio script, dito na tayo sa handling, handling figures properly. Okay, how do we round off figures? Okay, example, almost a hundred graduates have also filed a petition. It is necessary to round off figures if you are writing for a radio script because you will going to help or it will help your learners to visualize kung gaano karami yung 100 graduates. Okay? You can imagine kung gaano, ka gra gaano karami yung 100 pag na-round off mo yung figures. Okay? Sa example, a budget of 5,980 was allocated to the municipality. Okay? So, much better siya pag na-round off mo siya. Madawala na sila kasing time na uh, say for example, balikan or i-imagine kung pag exact figures yung uh, sinabi mo sa kanila or binigkas mo. Whereas pag uh, niround up mo yung figures, mas madali nilang matandaan yon. So considering na sila ay nakikinig sa kanilang mga radio. Okay, hindi nila pinabasa, hindi nila nakikita. So, therefore, uh, it is necessary for them, uh, for you to round off figures if you are writing for a radio script. Then, avoid beginning sentences with a person's age and in general, in a general with any number. But if it is, or the number, or the numeral is really a vital or very important information, please use the words, no? Words instead of using numerals in your beginning sentences. Okay, then spell out dollars, cents, pesos, percent, kilograms. Say, say for example, if you say $100, 50 cents, wow, 500,000 pesos, 10%, 5 kilograms, 1 meter, okay, or 10 meters, like that. Okay, so then you spell out fractions like one half, five, and a half. Okay, spell out numbers which are used at the beginning of the sentences. Then spell out numbers from one to ten, and for numbers eleven and up, you can use numerals now, number digits. Okay, now we proceed to the things that we have to consider if we are uh, writing a radio based instruction script. Okay, then we have this content, radio principles and elements, and language. So, so these are the three most important things that we have to take into consideration if you are writing a radio script. <clears throat> okay, it is heard only once. Once the message is aired, there is no way where the listener can recapture it. So the script writer should make it certain that simple and declarative sentences are being used. Or you may use repetition as a style. So law of uh, learning, uh, repetition, law of repetition and learning really applies if you are a script writer or if you are writing a region based instruction lesson. Okay. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay, then it consists of sound only. Okay, since word is the only bridge between the script writer and the listener, it must be used to impart concrete images. Meaning, the writer should not use words with clashing sounds and words that sound alike. Okay, so dapat iba yung sound na katok kaysa sound ng uh, orasan. Okay, 
to avoid confusion, iba yung sound ng ring ng, ng pag uh, ring ng bell sa school at iba rin naman yung sound ng ambulance. Okay? So there is a distinct sound for every distinct uh, different uh, for the uh, different objects. Okay? So to avoid confusions sa ating mga listeners. Then Leave out unnecessary details. Print stories tend to include a lot of details that we just don't have time for in broadcast. Okay, so only th say things that matter. Every second counts. Okay, time is precious. So therefore, just make it short, precise, and really simple. Okay, for your listeners to easily understand what you are trying to deliver to them. Okay, then generally sentences in a broadcast copy should be key, even shorter than those found in print articles. Why? Shorter sentences are more easily understood than long ones. Okay, remember that mas madali nilang matandaan at maunawaan yung mga sentences or yung mga pangungusap na maik or maikling pangungusap. Okay, kaysa dun sa mga uh, uh, mga uh, no, mga pangungusap or sentences which are complex, na? Kasi, pag marami, masyado ka ng maraming sinasabi, hindi nila yun uh, matandaan lahat-lahat. Dapat isa-isahin mo talaga. Okay? Para mas madali nilang maintindihan at maalala ang yung mga sinasabi. Especially pag concept na yung binibigay mo sa kanila. Really make it simple and clear. Okay? Then, Keep it conversational. Use a conversational style in your broadcast writing. Doing so will make it sound more like real speech as opposed to a script someone is reading. Okay, so wag masyadong ano na, uh, in a way na parang nagbabasa ka lang sa kanila. Make it conversational. Involve your learners. Baka ay, hindi na sila nakikinig. Okay. Diba? Fellow teachers, nandyan pa ba kayo? Nakikinig kayo? O, parang ganon. Baka natutulog na. Okay, diba? Because as a radio script writer, no, especially sa current situation natin ngayon, our current setup, it is really a huge challenge for them, for us to sustain all the learners' interest. Nasa ating mga kamay, nakasalalay, mga fellow RBI writers. Ang ang pagsusustain ng interest ng mga bata upang matuto. ba? Okay, so gawin natin keep uh, conversational. Yung parang nag-uusap-usap lang. Okay, so make them feel na kahit malayos lang hindi kayo personally nagkakaharap si teacher nasa radio station, si uh, learner nasa bahay. Okay, make them feel na kahit malayo ka ay malapit din. Okay, parang ganun nga. Okay, so gawin mong uh, parang conversational lang, nakikipag-usap lang ka lang in front ng iyong learners na parang nasa usual classroom setup, nag, nagbibigay ka ng lesson. Parang ganun. Okay. So, tips in writing for radio. In broadcast writing, you really shouldn't put more than one main idea in each sentence. So, tulad kanina lang sinabi ko, okay, why not you guessed it? More than one main per main idea per sentence and that sentence will be gonna, uh, gonna be too long. Okay, use one main idea per sentence. Mas madaling matandaan, mas madaling maunawaan. Okay, so this one is... Uh, format for using the drama approach. Okay, use sentence case in writing the spells. Non-spoken lines must be set in capitals, bold, and be underlined. Fade out, provide instructions for music insertions, capital, and fade under. Okay, so ito yung setup or format na ginagamit sa drama approach. Then later on, I will be showing you examples kung paano ang format ng school on air or so what approach na ginagamit sa uh, na ginamit ng uh, during the webinar of the UP no? webinar series compare dito sa ating drama uh, approach so, so may compare natin kung ano ang format ng dalawa kung ano ang mas applicable at mas madali sa inyong gawin yun ang gagawin nyo Diba? Kung saan kayo mas comfortable at mas applicable sa ating mga learners, gagamitin nyo. Or pwede rin namang combination ng drama at uh, SOWA approach. Diba? 
So terms to remember, fade in, fade out, fade under, sustain up for music. Okay, this refers to the musical scoring or the technical instructions. Later on, we will be discussing, I will be showing you examples of this uh, RBI episode for the Akend Mujol lesson. Okay? Then elements of plot. We have here exposition. It starts with the conflict problem. Yung ginagamit natin sa usual na uh, plot. Okay, so, but there are different kinds of plot. You can, it would depend to you how are you going to express your creativity, how you play your craft in writing. Huh? Okay, so how you will experiment. Kung ano yung mas effective na paggamit ng plot. Okay, so this one is for exposition. It's nag start siya sa conflict. Then there is a rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. Ito yung ginamit sa drama approach. Usual, yung free, free tags pyramid nito. Then this one is a structure of ratio based instruction for a dramatic approach format. There is the objective of the lesson, significance ng lesson. Okay, let's continue. Dito na tayo ngayon sa. Uh, principles dito na tayo how do we write our RBI script okay dito ito yung example ng structure of a radio based instruction using drama based approach Okay, so ito naman yung sample ng SOA format for a 30-minute lesson. Okay, kung sinabi natin SOA, yung school on air na uh, ginamit, ginagamit ng UP Diliman sa kanilang school on air na uh, Raji Escuela. Okay, there is a program opening intro for 1 minute. Then there is a feedback portion for 5 minutes. Review previous lesson for 5 minutes. There is a musical break, 2 to 3 minutes. Lecture for the day for 10 minutes. Brief review of the day's lesson for 30 minutes. Announcement or reminders for 2 minutes. And there is a closing for 1 minute. Okay, so this one is a suggested script format for a radio-based instruction lesson. Okay, there is a time estimate. So, ganun nakasulat siya. Ito yung structure ng canned lesson for modules. Okay, there is under sa technical instruction, and nandiyan yung technical or musical scoring na tinatawag natin. Okay, so ano yung uh, uh, music, no? See, for example, we say music 1 up, sustain for 17 seconds, then fade under. Okay, pag sinabi natin fade under, parang uh, background music, then magpi-fade siya. Pag sinabi natin fade in, okay, ibig sabihin... Uh, music for a uh, music sustain up for fade in uh, from mahina medyo lalakas siya pag fade out naman mula sa malakas din unti-unti siyang magfi fade out okay so ganun yung mga uh, kumbaga mga radio based na mga terminologies na later on we can explore and we will learn as we go along the way okay so under naman sa ng spell is nandoon yung role okay so you notice that uh, sa so one naman kasi na format hindi siya naka it's not written in a capital letter or naka caps lock uh, dito sa ano dito naman sa drama format or sa drama approach ay nakasulat siya sa capital letters lahat naka caps lock okay caps lock para intense daw okay yung mga non spoken lines is na written in uh, naka bold siya and they, uh, then naka underline okay so nandiyan yung role ng uh, yun Dito yung nakalagay, under sa spell doon, nakalagay yung uh, sasabihin ng uh, voice talent. Okay? So, we have other tips for conceptualizing your RBI. Okay? Things we have to consider, other things. Okay, it is important to uh, contextualize and localize. Diba? Make use of the learner's local environment for the learner uh, to, uh, to make the learning process more meaningful. Pag may relevant kasi, or may relevance kasi yung uh, story, or yung uh, naginamit mo sa yung RBI lesson, mas madaling maalala, mas madaling makarelate yung mga tagapakinig mo. Okay, so pag nag-contextualize ka at nag-localize, so marami tayong story na magagamit, na localized story, nandyan lang sa ating LR 
portal. Hi, Sir Mayo and Sir Anne. Okay, sa so tanungin nyo lang ang dalawang, ang maganda at poging yan. <laughs> okay, next. Encourage involvement. <coughs> You may involve parents, guardians, community leaders, and other stakeholders in your storyline. Yes, you can really approach them. No, nanay, tatay, tito, tita. Okay, pag may mga parents siya na marunong, hindi lang yung na mga nagmamarunong, pwede na rin yung nagmamarunong. I-involve nyo na rin sila. Okay, say for example, sabihin nyo, may lesson tayo ngayon. Can you help me with this one? May alam po ba kayong local stories? Or uh, ano, po, ano po, gusto nyo po ba? bang makitake part? Gusto niyo po bang maging voice talent? Okay? Na mag, uh, mag, mag, mag kumuha ng role na ito sa ating drama? Okay, why not? Okay, so in that way, mas may involvement yung community, yung community leaders and other stakeholders. So, mas masaya yun, ha? And then, as a script writer, creativity is really vital. Okay? Nasa ating mga kamay na kasalalay kung maisusustain natin ang interest ng ating mga learners sa pamamagitan ng ating script. Okay, so therefore, it's a really a gargantuan challenge. No? It's a huge challenge for the script writers. And we really have to embrace that challenge. Because it is, balikan natin yung ating role, it is to entertain, inform, and educate. So, we have to embrace the change, we have to embrace the challenge, and we really have to think creatively. Okay? So, that's, our ch that's my challenge for my fellow script writers. Okay? Therefore, always think creatively, always think original. Okay, that ends my presentation. I will be showing you samples of the uh, RBI script for a drama approach format. Okay, fellow teachers, let us have a short walkthrough of the radio-based instruction script. Okay, this presentation is from Mr. J.L. John C. Haro of Otto National High School. Okay, so script writing is planning the entire production. So, yung mga script writers dyan, saludo ako sa inyo. Hindi madali yung task natin. Okay, medyo padugo. <laughs> then, general parts of a radio script. We have technical instructions, time estimate, roles, and spells. Because I am showing you a format of a uh, sample RBI script using Java approach based on the module canned lesson okay then this one is a sample of a uh, learning area in science no okay so transcription of the assigned recording so episode number two learning area science titulo basura bawas bawasan Episode 50 layuni na tutukoy ang paraan ng pagbabawas ng basura so we have the time technical instructions and of course you have the spell okay it is the suggested script format I already shown this in my previous presentation then we have fade in fade out okay so this one let's go for this okay so the time na notice nyo my 4 seconds na breather. So, ginhawa dalong anay para avoid sang ubo-ubo kag hindi ma ano ang tingog. Okay. Breather, four, uh, 4 seconds. Okay. We have the spell. Uh, teacher episode. Bilang limang po, titulo, basuray, bawas, bawasan. Okay. There then, for technical instruction, we have music 1 up, sustain for 7 seconds, then fade ender. So, si teacher magbabasa na no? ng kanyang script or yung voice talent natin. So, introduce the number of the episode as well as its title. So, example, teacher, uh, episode bilang limang po, titulo, basuray, bawas, bawasan. Okay, so dito na, na-introduce mo na yung number of the episode as well as the title. Then, define the objective of the lesson. Ang ating leksyon ay tutukoy sa paraan ng pagbabawas ng basura. Ito ay ang recycling o paggamit ng muli sa mga bagay na itinuturing na basura pero may pakinabang pa. 
Okay, so yung facing mo, hindi masyadong uh, mabilis. Kasi nga, nakikinig para mas madali nilang matandaan. Hindi masyadong mabilis yung pagbigkas mo ng mga salita. Okay, sa akin, binibilisan ko lang kasi uh, may time frame tayo. Okay, then, establish the significance of the lesson. Example, we have here, ang pangangalaga sa kapaligiran ay responsibilidad ng lahat. Ang malinis na kapaligiran ay nakakatulong sa kalusugan ng mga tao at ng pamayanan. Ano ang ating magagawa upang mapanatiling malinis ang ating paligid? Okay, ganyan. Establish the significance of the lesson. Then we have radio-based instruction. It should be situation-based. So, sabi nga, para mas makarelate yung mga nakikinig natin, it should be, it has to be a day-to-day -day experience, no? Effective tools. So, especially sa mga lower grades. So, mas bet nila ito. Kahit minsan sa mga matatanda na nakiisip bata. Pwede na rin yun. Okay. So, provide an overview of the story. Okay. So, sa paghanap ng kanyang mga kagamitan na tagpuan ni Lolo Ando ang mga abobot ni Lola Isyang na nakalagay sa itaas ng kabinet. So, ganun. May overview kung ano yung magaganap. No? Parang preview. Then, use music to accentuate your, your radio production, but do not overuse it, no? Kahit huwag mong gawin naman na, na binibigkas or sinasabi mo na yung concept, ay nandiyan pa rin yung background. So, hindi nila masyadong maunawaan kasi makikinig na lang sila doon sa background music. Okay, so timing is everything. Okay, use original music much as possible to avoid IPR issues. We will leave it to the MAPI department na lang sila. Gifted doon sa ganong mga bagay. So, sulat na lang kayo ng script, best. best. Okay. Then you may start your story with the presentation of the conflict. So, this one. Depende sa plot na gagamitin mo. Okay. Uh, we I have already shown this one, exposition. Then, other types of plot, may iba rin siya linear, non-linear, forward, cyclical, multi-plot. So, depende sa inyo kung saan kayo masiyang at sundan, mas applicable at comfortable zone nyo na atakihin yung uh, script nyo or yung lesson. Gap, uh, hanapan nyo ng magandang angle. Okay, writing should be communicative in style, no? Parang nag-uusap lang. Parang usual normal setup. Then you may add necessary expressions. Okay. So for example, nandiyan yung galit. Okay. So, yung voice na galit, yung voice na mahinahon, yung voice na masaya, dapat talaga i-exercise uh, or simula na yung aralin ng mga voice talent. Okay. Yung pag-change ng mga voices, so gifted sila doon. Okay, play with exchange of short lines. So, sabi nga kanina, should be better pag maikli lang at madaling matandaan. No? Okay, find the perfect spot to discuss necessary concepts. So, parang journalism lang din no? sa photo journey. Kailangan hanapin mo yung perfect angle ng picture para mas uh, maganda yung kalalabasan niya. Then, timing is everything. So, hanap ka doon ng Uh, part kung saan mo mailalagay yung concept na gusto mong ipaabot sa yung mga ta tagapakinig. Okay, like for example with this one, oh, Jaja at sa Kalola, alam mo ba na hindi natutunaw yan? Mas kinailang taon ang nakalipas kapag itinapon mo kung saan-saan ang plastic, ito ay maaaring makabara pa sa mga estero. Okay, so timing, no? Diyan mo ilalagay yung concept na gusto mo. Iparating sa mga tagapakinig. Then simplify technical terms. Okay, ang ozone layer ang siyang nagsisilbing protection ng ating mundo laban sa matinding mga elemento tulad ng sinag ng araw. Okay, so nandun na, na-simplify at na-define mo yung mga technical terms para madaling maunawa ng yung mga tagapakinig. Okay, offer a solution to the conflict. Okay, this is the most important. Okay, so tulad niyan, nako lola, binibili ang mga ganitong bagay. Alam mo ba, lolo, lola, ito ay nire-recycle din. Oh. So ganyan, there is a solution to the conflict being presented. Okay, then resolve the conflict. There is a resolution. Okay, this one, example, no? yung story natin ay gum gumamit ng inverted check na elemento ng plot. Okay, exposition, doon, nagre-reklamo mo si Lolo Ando sa mga abot ni, abubot ni Lola Isyang. Rising action, nagsagutan yung dalawang matanda. Climax, dumating si Jaja at nagbigay paliwanag kay Lola Esyang. Falling action, naiintindihan ni Lola Esyang mga bagay-bagay. Resolution, nagtulungan sila sa pagbabawas ng basura sa bahay. Okay, provide a breather for lessons to sink in. Okay, for every concept, there is a breather. Okay, pwede gamitin yung music as a separator. 
ng concept para mas uh, they would have time to reflect or to remember kasi pag pag sunod-sunod yung concept na ay binabato mo sa kanila mahi, mahirapan silang sumalo noon okay so take time for them to uh, sink in ng mga informations na uh, binibigay mo sa kanila And then summarize the list, last the lesson or provide a recap okay so law of repetition sabi nga dapat may recap na uulit yun yung mga bagay na dapat nilang matandaan sa iyong lesson for the day. Okay, then you may utilize music as a separator in your recap portion. Pwede rin to. Okay, as what I had mentioned. Then provide assessment through using questions to ponder on. Okay, so may mga assessment. Oh, sa inyo bang patahanan, ginagawa ba ninyo parang ito? Okay, so in that way, magre-reflex lang, oh nga, ginagawa ko mga ba ito? Nagre-recycle ba ako? Or uh, inihihagis ko na lang sa basurahan ang mga ito? Okay. The structure of a ratio-based instruction, ibigay ko na to kanina. Then end with a very short remark. Muli, ito ang yung teacher sa yung papawid. Maraming salamat sa inyong, tagap, uh, sa inyong pakikinig. Okay, short remark. Then, pro, use music to provide a cool down. Then, music one up, sustain for 22 seconds, then cut. So, before ka mag-end, mag-provide ka pa ng music. So, in order for for the listeners to have a cool down. Then, process our flow in writing for our BI. We have uh, to remember this one. Say, your objective. Establish the significance of the lesson. Provide an overview. Utilize the story using, could be using exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution. Enumerate the summary of key points and post-assessment questions. Okay, don't worry later on, I will be providing you samples of this RBI episodes or RBI uh, lesson using the dramatic approach format. Okay, then outline every kind module. So this one, we have the episode number, title, introduction about the topic. Topic, objective, introduction of drama, drama, questions, conclusions of the lesson. Okay, this is one of the outline if we can. Okay, and that ends our presentation for the day. This is Rotan Monteroyo saying maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. And I hope you learned something from me today. And if you have questions, you can just write that in our chat box we will try to address and answer them thank you very much everyone have a pleasant day and god bless us all thank you